share some examples of flat picks that I have handy here in the hopes that it could draw you towards one or move you in a direction that you might be looking for. Some of these picks, these John Pierce fast turtle picks, I have to thank my good YouTube pal Muzi for suggesting these. So these are something of the density of tortoise shell. They have an indentation. They're about $10 a piece. Made by John Pierce, P-E-A-R-S-E. -E. I have here an extra heavy and a heavy. I'm also going to be looking at the V-Pick freakishly large round 4.4 millimeter, 4.0 millimeter. I think this one is also four. The heavy might be three. Then we're going to look at some nylon Herco picks and some nylon Dunlop picks and just a regular old Fender medium. So this is unscientific overview. Just to give you a little idea, I'm using SM7 Shure microphone here, about this far from the guitar. Just, just out of sight of the camera here. So maybe a strumming test here. So one thing about these Pierce picks is they have this dimple that makes it harder to play in my conventional way, which is I usually use the rounded side, but the dimple does encourage you to use the point, so. If I just lean in a little bit, it's nice and warm, I think. Here is, for contrast, a Fender Medium. I'm going to use, rather than the point, I'm going to use the customary side that I use, which is the rounded side. So definitely a little more bottom end as far as I can hear. Very even. How about the Herco Flex 50? These are great on electric guitar. These are the gold ones. Herco Gold. Sorry, Flex. Yeah, Flex 50. I use the dimpled side with the rounded side. So depending on what you need, if you're doing a rhythm track, you need something that's going to cut a little bit more. Also for electric, for distorted lead lines particularly, this has these little dimples that you can, not so great on acoustic guitar, but on electric it's certainly a nice effect. If you listen to Jimmy Page's solo on T for One off of Led Zeppelin Presence, you'll hear this pick and the kind of scraping it does, which I think is really nice. Another pick that Jimmy Page is known for is the Herco, this is called the Holy Grail. This is a Herco Flex 75. They're sold now by Dunlop as the Holy Grail. And it's supposed to be the same material makeup as the older ones, but I remember the older ones weren't quite this stiff back in the 70s. So again, it has that pronounced scrapey side the way I'm using it. Zing, I think you'll hear it too in the playing of The Edge from U2 where he uses the dimpled side to get a little upper end articulation. Going back to the Pierce, this should be quite a contrast then. Definitely more low end. So this is the big extra heavy Pierce 4.0 I think it is. I also got the heavy. There's not a whole lot of difference between them. But it is quite comfortable. So this is the heavy Pierce. Here's the extra heavy. Definitely has a, a lower hump down there on the attack, but it's quite nice. This is a 
small-bodied Sheeran SO3, I believe it is, made in Ireland by Loudon. And it's, so it's very small-bodied and... If you've heard any of the guitar sextet recordings I've recorded, they're all with this guitar. pick freakishly large pearly gates round which I've used for years now a little brighter of a an audible ping on the strings the I think the uh, V picks they do have a kind of an audible other note that's happening depending depending on where you pick here too then I will use Alan Holdsworth's favorite which was the Jim, Jim Dunlop one millimeter has the scrapes on them Jim Dunlop one meter. It has grips. It's, uh, I can try to put a link to the exact one it is. So quite often with these, it'll make a difference the angle at which you pick. So here's flat on, which I don't really do ever. Here's slightly angled. I'm pointed towards my opposite shoulder is a way to think of it. So we're imploring the string to speak rather than hitting it. It's, we can temper some of that high end. I'm always of the mind that it's harder to get a darker tone on guitar than a brighter tone. So we might as well aim for darker and then we can brighten up very easily if we want. So it's pressing the string down a little bit volume on the string is is equal to displacement so if I if I pull it back and displace it rather far from its center line it's loud so I'm trying to push it down and in also the weakest tone we can get is snapping out it damps it damps a lot of things and we're just left with this high sparkly stuff which I usually stay away from I don't relate to that kind of sound. So think down and in, out and up, down and in. So here's Herco Flex 50. Fender Medium, regular old. pointing this edge of the pick towards my opposite shoulder. So instead of flat on, uh, some people do it this way too. Slicing this way off, I guess, towards the floor and off of this shoulder, but I like it. This is more the George Benson way too, having the wrist a little lower and uh, being able to mute. I'm almost always holding on to the first string with my little finger unless I'm playing it. So, so it's muted. So Fender Medium, Herco Holy Grail Flex 75, has that top end edge. If you use the point, it doesn't, of course. Kind of a lot of variance in how I'm angling it and the tone it's getting. Back in the way old days, people used to use feathers and quills so very very tiny point also I should mention that the amount of material the the amount that you're covering the string when you pick it 
makes a huge difference. So if I used the pointiest one, maybe the Fender Medium, just I'm going to use the very, very point. Now I'm going to use the edge sideways. A little bigger can get it a little rounder. If I use my thumb, I'll go to the wound string. So the reason West Montgomery and his thumb sound so warm is it's the amount of surface area that's contacting the string at the, at the point at which you pick. So you can imagine the people that played with quills way back when, it's a very bright sound, probably not a lot of bass. So as I roll up to my nail, it goes from... And likewise, if we're over the fingerboard, that's one thing. If we start... The string has a harder time moving back here, so it's restricted by the, by the saddle. So we're getting a lot of high end. It's why, to my ear, under saddle pickups usually don't sound very good because we're getting we're getting the string talking right down to the pickup at its kind of its nastiest point which is this also has to do with the overtone series of the string we're moving to different nodal points so if I go right over the nodal point at the I'm at the fifth fret here, so if I go to the equivalent 12 frets higher, I'll be at fret 17. If I pick right over that, it gets kind of a fluty thing, especially on electric guitar, on the neck pickup, it gets very fluty. How about... I don't know if you can hear that kind of... sounds like one of those Casio VL tone old electronic keyboards that were small and played little melodies. Let me see if I can get it better. Hear that fluty round harmonic in there? Flex 75. With the edge, with the scrapey parts, and avoiding them. Here's the tip. And I usually take some sandpaper and whatnot and really file down the outer edges to make them a little smoother. I'll go back to the pierces here to round things out. This, I believe, is the heavy. This is the extra heavy. I just got them in the mail today. That feels really nice. My old friend, the V-Pick Freakishly Large Pearly Gates. Definitely in the ballpark of the Pierce. A little bit brighter. No dimple. I'm really used to these two because I've used them for years, so. Fender Medium. Fingers. So I hope this has been some interesting stuff maybe something to think about something just to tune your ear in and try on your own not meant to be comprehensive or scientific in any way just some different sounds i'll try to put links to these different picks down in the description so you can check them out if you please and as always i wish you a very good day